Years ago, we converted from doing some tractor tillage to pretty much farming like a gardener and actually creating permanent beds. We went from four acres of production to one acre because we knew it was gonna be much more intensively managed and we saw the same yields going from four acres to one acre of no-till permanent beds. So that is a pretty big testament to us that this style of farming works, that we can grow a huge amount of food and a small amount of space. And that's what we're demonstrating here. Really see, we call this chocolate cake soil. Looks like, you know, it's just moist enough. We've had a lot of rain recently, but in previous years, when we would have had as much rain as we've had recently, you would just see like, well, there wouldn't, the beds wouldn't be this raised, and you'd see cracks through the soil, you know, because the soil was not nearly as porous, and so it was just it would dry after a rain, it would crack, but this you can see this so the water just like is able to seep in to this kind of soil and just by having soil that's minimally disturbed like this allows the soil to increase its water holding capacity because you're not pulverizing it into these tiny particles that you are when you're tilling. You're actually allowing the soil structure to just do what it wants to do. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing. It's not like something we are designing. It's like, we're just allowing it to be. Having soil that is just stewarded in this way um, really helps deal with both getting a lot of rain or having a lot of drought. In either direction, it's, um, it's more resilient. This had double crop sunflowers on it last year with quite a few different species of cover crop growing with it. So we pull this up. See that, how dark it is? There's, there's your earthworm right there. He seems pretty happy and content. Conventional tillage, anhydrous, monoculture corn. Okay, no N, P, and K. I've never applied any P and K on this, this farm since I've owned it. Um, very high pH soils. Very diverse cropping rotation. This is one of my longest no-till cover crop running fields. I'm just gonna squeeze them together, try to apply the same amount of pressure and see what happens. See which one washed away quicker? This one has structure. If you look at the structure of this, of this it actually has structure. You can see all the aggregation. It actually has soil structure to it. And we look down at the corn here, so this is an open holiday egg corn from 1894. Oops, it's got two deep roots already. I can't pull it up. Now tear them up. Okay. So you see how this main root here has all that soil around it? That there is your rhizosheath. So that means you're, that, this, that the plant root itself and the plant are making the symbiosis connection with the soil and the biology. So yeah pretty good I'm happy we also planted this two days before a big rain we've had nothing but rain and the corn come up just fine like well, I said this is one of my longest running no-till cover crop fields not my absolute longest but one of them tillage is a great thing at making nutrients available right but what does it cause it causes so many other issues right we have runoff the soil gets thin compacted because it's bare um, we have we, we don't have as early seedling vigor when, the, when we get those hard packing rains. We get cracks on our ground, which are all unnatural. We should not see those. We can have a very profitable system because we're not tilling. Tillage costs roughly probably around $25 to $30 an acre with the cost of fuel and parts right now. Your time is worth something is valued at something, and you value it at something, regardless whether you want to admit it or not. So all that tillage passes that you're taking takes a lot of energy too. I mean, we always want to think, think about the cost of it, but it takes a lot of fossil fuels to burn all that energy too to destroy the soil, in my opinion.
This field has been no-till for uh, well over 30 years because it was a rough field. This is where we experimented with uh, first crop no-tilling. Uh, back in the 80s, we actually established that double crop soybeans, even before genetically modified and glyphosate and uh, those types of things, we were no-tilling all our double crop soybeans. And we double cropped a lot. And, uh, uh, in all through the 70s and 80s and um, of course we were more dry land then and now that we have more water we've gone to this classic rotation and introduced the cover crops in the mix but what we're trying to do here is just you know protect the soil we have and then enhance it and and we do that with residue management no-till and then introduction of cover crops to stimulate keep the biological activity going. Basically what happens is, especially with these cereals, I mean, look, we're, we, it's the greenest field around and we're using the sun's energy. We've used it all winter somewhat and it's kept the soil ginning all winter. It doesn't need to get revved up when we plant the, uh, uh, the beans. It's, it's ready to go. The benefits of planting green is, for one thing, you carry more residue into the growing season. It's like you've mulched your garden, you know. And look at how mellow this ground is. I mean, it, there's a lot of residue here. And with these modern planters, you can, you can get through this residue. And, uh, but believe it or not, if you'd take a soil temp on this versus some of this bare ground around here, it'd probably be a little warmer and the reason is the biological activity. It's the old classic, if you build it, they will come. We're building a healthy soil here and the earthworms just boom, they're, they're there and it doesn't take many years to, to do it. We're looking at all of last year's residue still there in some shape or form, but see how mellow it is? And look how, look how mellow the dirt is. Instead of making a, a mud ball, if I if I'd have done this on a, a garden tilled field, it would be a mud ball. And look, it just, it's just crumbling apart. And that's caused by aggregation and uh, uh, these all these different species in here exuding glues, right? Glues from their roots that uh, are causing a lot of the biological activity. term I use is recreational tillage. I see fields that I didn't think a thing about it when I was young. You know, they'd till them up like a garden right before winter. They would, they would take soybean stubble and disc it up right, right before winter. And uh, I just can't conceive of doing that now. There's absolutely zero benefit and uh, the, the possibility of erosion happening and uh, those types of issues are very real and very devastating. And when you think about the tonnage of soil and nutrients, every time you lose some soil, some nutrients are going down the creek with it. I'm a habitual field walker. I love to just go out and walk I scout through the rows, I, uh, I pull the plants apart in the soybean fields and look down and see what, what the, the dirt looks like and everything. We were harvesting more of the rain that fell and getting it down in the soil from the no-till and the residue. And I watched our fields when dry spells would happen and we would always start showing uh, ill effects of the drought later than conventionally tilled fields. We weathered through wet periods better as well as dry periods better. Don't be afraid to try it and you don't have to bet the farm. Just try it on your poorest piece of ground and on the back 40 that nobody can see. Now let's do our earthworm test and see where we're at. And this is the wetter part of the field. Yep, it isn't a monster worm, but I've, I'm still uh, batting a thousand today on the uh, worm on every pull. 